Hi friends, in the part one of the restaurant management, we have seen a set of uh, items whatever was offered and that item only we are created the bill, we have confirmed the bill and all we have seen. If you have not seen that part one, you can, the link is here, the, in the description also the link is there, you can just click and watch the part one. Now in, now in this particular version, we will be showing you how this data is integrated to the mysql table but so far we are just pulling the data not confirming the bills and all we are not taken up again will that part also will be added so i'll request you please to closely follow the part one now we are discussing about integration with mysql this is part two part three will be integrating it with the generating the bills and all how the we can pull out the details about what's the today's sell, what was the yesterday's sell, what was the last month's sell also. So all those things we will I will understand slowly, slowly. I'll request you follow the closely the all the parts so you can understand it better. And all the anyway the source codes are available. You can keep on changing it as per your requirement. So for that purpose, please subscribe to our channel so you will know what are the previously we have posted, what we are going to post, and frequently you will be notified also. That's please request uh, you to subscribe to our channel. Now to continue further, what's this? What's the advantage of this database integration? You can see I have a set of uh, offers here from the breakfast. Now I can let me just generate a one item. Already we have seen this in part one. Same thing and just slightly it is modified. Now I am giving get get bill, so I got the bill. Now moment I confirm it received, so it's reset. Now I can offer that go for lunch. So this menu you can see now it is changed to lunch. I can again go for dinner also. The entire menu is changed. Intentionally in all the items I have mentioned what it is the dinner, breakfast or lunch. In your case you need not, it can be managed from the database side, uh, database side also. So now let's, let's go for lunch. What's that all the menu items are changed to lunch now. This uh, in name I have just given and in the bracket you can see it is the price. So the price whatever in the database is set that is pulled out and every item price can be managed from the database side. And here right now for this script we are using MySQL database. Even you can use it a SQLite also quite simply you can change it to SQLite without any much of uh, difficulties and even you can keep the data in Excel also and in a CSV or in a Google sheet also and manage this restaurant uh, management. Advantage of data keeping it in a separately in a MySQL or Excel and all is you can independently manage it. Even you can control the availability also. We'll see that. So let's just uh, create one more bill for the dinner. I have just click the radio button here uh, dinner now I am just selecting one item from the dinner here also let's go for another thing all this we have seen in the part one but this time it is data is coming from the table so here it is now let's understand our table we are inside our uh, PHP my admin this tool I use for my connection and all managing the MySQL. If you are using the workbench or any other tool, you can still manage it well. The same thing, it is just the managing the tables, creating and all, wherever you are comfortable with, you can continue that. If you have any difficulty on uh, uh, in uh, that you want to use workbench only, you can ask me that I'll show the demo in the workbench. It's all the same only. Now watch this plus two products. Intentionally, I've given the name products because it, it's a common requirement so you can tomorrow use it for your uh, uh, say shop management or anything now you can see here these are the data whatever is populated here so there are 24 data Incidentally, i have taken 8 8 8 8 for breakfast 8 for lunch and another 8 for dinner you can change it and you, you should change it also and look at this every product has a product id product name unit price product category and availability is one so what is this why i have kept it the availability you can let's see the structure of it you see the structure here. You can see product ID is the auto increment, product name, where you have, we have written breakfast item, item one, breakfast, like that. And you need, so how will be packed per plate or um, it's a total pack or what it is. Even if you are using it for a uh, shop management also, you can see packet cost, kg cost or one liter. This is the unit what it is then the price okay you know that category here i am changing three categories i have used one two three intentionally i have given one two three give it a generic one say for breakfast then it is one for the lunch it is two for the dinner it is three then how i am collecting the only breakfast only lunch or only dinner 
that I will see in the, that we manage in the Kinter side. We are writing the query, we manage it. Then I am giving one more column as available. Whether it is available or not, by default it is one, means it is available. Say you have some other interface, some other uh, tool where you are managing the availability, say that it is stock out or suppose you have 30, already you have sold uh, 29, so you don't want further to sell it, one minimum stock is to be maintained. So for that purpose, the moment you make it zero, then it is stocked out. So it, that will not be going to the, again to the display part of the menu. So that's, this is our database and you can just browse it here. You can see this, all the products are there. This SQL dump to create your table will be available. So you can, you need not, these are all test data only. You can subsequently change it. What I will be doing it is, I will just give you one sample query here. Select, uh, let's say PCAT, okay. So I am just select star from plus two product where I am using P underscore cat equal to two. Means I want lunch only. So let me, I am just click the go button here. Here you can see all the lunch has come up. So when I am clicking the radio button, I am just passing the one variable to that function. We will see in the uh, tick enter side, the script side, what changes are required. So this is how our database is. You can download the SQL dump of it. Let's understand the code here. Now, if you are in the following the part one, you can uh, would have seen that there is a menu dictionary we have used. Now it is not required. I'll just remove this one. Why I'm doing this? Because now the data is coming from our table and watch this line, line number five from my connect import my connection. Now what I did is actually there is a my connect is here is another file here. I have this one. There are two lines only. So from SQL I am importing the create engine and I am creating here the my connect where which I am importing and using it. This is my connection to the database. I can just change here at make it SQLite also it will work in SQLite. But why I am keeping these two lines separately not in the I could have write it uh, write it also in the main file uh, here it is I can write these two lines. The advantage here is say I will have some other file also where I will be making the stock availability adding the stocks or updating. Now what happens suppose and this package suppose I install it in another system there the MySQL database details are different then I have to change in all the 10 pages if I have used in the package everywhere now keeping it at a common place at one place only I can change this and my script will ready to work so that is the purpose this is a modular design so that's that's the purpose I am keeping it separately so here you can see I have just call it my connection here you just remember this this one particularly so this is what is my give me the connection and this I will be using as far as this page is concerned we are only a bother about my connection this particular one to collect the data imagine the another advantage is say that page I have changed it and kept the my connection as variable and connect it to Google Sheet, then I can get the data from Google Sheet also, and I can get it from SQLite also. So I have to only work on a single page, not in the all the pages to change the script to different different database. Now let's understand how this changes. Rather, the code has come down. Code has come because now the data is coming from the table, and we are using a loop only. So rest of the things you have already seen in the part one, we have discussed this. This also build generation remains the same. There is nothing is changed in the build generation and the f this one and images I have just left it but not used because uh, I promise I will in future will give you a try to give you a set of transparent images that will be enhance the look and feel. So I am just writing it text now because you can understand it that it's a breakfast or a dinner or all those things instead of using some images. You can change it with your favorite food item or anything. So here I left it there, image menu 1, menu 2, so you can manipulate the images, but we are not using this. Now, what the main important change is, was this line number 138. When the items we are displaying, we are not displaying it directly now. What you are telling is, we are keeping it inside a function, so items, and so item function is here. Why I am doing this is, because every time the radio button you click, here it is the set of radio buttons. It passed the value here in this by default or starting I have passed one. Subsequently, if you see this radio button, here it is the first radio button. Show item one. Next one, pass the radio button. Show items two. Show items three. 
it is all all i am saying that so the din breakfast so the dinner or so the lunch so that is why the this function i am calling it every time uh, let me come back every time with a different different set of values for the database now come to the i will receive this one from here sorry where it is i am so items so this is the so items here now it, inside the function this is small function rather it was more in part 1 here it is so items in that i have now i have made all the variables at global i have to make it because that should be available in my inside my billing function also so i have made it line number 117 r c i and my menu my menu is where the earlier it was the dictionary now it is coming we'll see how we push it is r is rows c is column i is my index values because now the dynamically the menus are created so, but i don't know whether it will be one row two row or three row say i have two rows now because it is eight items say you have 12 items so you have the third row so and your radio button will be below that so you don't know how many rows will come so that is why these are all variables are used now here lies your database pulling the data see here what i am doing is select star from plus 2 products we have just seen inside our mysql database it is there where p cat equal to str cat this is your breakfast or lunch or dinner give the category say if it is a store you can show it's a vegetables item so the food items or so the whatever item you want to bill it that item you can say you are in your store you may have thousands of item you don't want while billing uh, screen it should show all the items say somebody has come up with a food item you just click the radio button so from that you can filter it so this is the query what it is if you are not sure about how the query works and what's the thing that's a separate uh, we'll take it and there are a lot of videos are there also you have any difficulties put it in the comment section we can explain it also how this query this is a simple query this will work in your sqlite database also there is no change here is required that's the advantage we have this modular design now you can see my record set i am collecting and inside a for loop i am collecting this all the records now you see the importance is here i am i am just creating a menu there is not menu 1 menu 2 menu 3 like that i am not creating i am here i am what i am doing below my r1 r1 another row i am creating the spin boxes whatever it is i am just adding below each item will have because they will have a common c or column value has to be common because food item 1 means each menu box will be uh, sorry spin box will be below that now <coughs> here i am appending the this already we have discussed this this we am appending to the index of the spin box now here i am creating the dictionary with the item and particular item and its values and all so this also we have discussed in the part 1 now what this last this particular thing is this is the row and column say i am telling if c is greater than 2 means you have reached the third one is already you have placed 0 1 2 3 so fourth one is already you have placed it starts from 0 then change the column to 0 and go to the next row why i am jumping for two places because i want to keep some gap in for the spin box also otherwise column is column so first item is placed then next item just shift the column to column plus 1 so it is column 0 next will be column 1 next will be column 2 next will be column 3 will be placed so fourth item is placed because it starts from 0 but that time what happened because this condition is fulfilled once moment column is became 3 so now next column is not 4 it is 0 so and row is increased by 2 because i have to put the spin box so that's the concept this this three four lines does the uh, that rows and column management you can change it the way you want you want more items to be displayed on the uh, in each uh, row so you change increase this item to make it to 3 4 5 or 5 so you have more item in a row so i accordingly you can adjust it so that's the key thing of this and i am further to place the radio buttons and all i am not randomly putting put it in the fourth row or fifth row because in the part one we have seen our items were fixed so two rows were data were, we know the button will be in the fifth row only but right now we are not so sure because we don't know how many rows of data will be coming from the database so here that is why 
what we did is what the air value or the row value is uh, and that we have increased by one and then we started placing our radio buttons and uh, all the button stops and this r also is a global variable so it is outside the function we have declared it here see here that's why it is we have declared it here and in the line number 120 117 we have declared it 117 we have declared it as a global variable so what happened whatever changes happened inside this function for the value of r or in that sense c and all that same will be carried to the outside the function also so inside the function say r has ended up with value 6 then seventh column onwards my all my buttons and all those things will be placed so automatically it will take care of that so this is the three radio buttons i have just placed you can you know all the radio buttons should have a common variable because this is a basic difference between a radio button and a checkbox so it it will all have three radio buttons have the common variables r1 b r1 b r1 b if it would have been a checkbox then i would have give, given a different one and in that case my query also suppose you want to show breakfast as well as the dinner items also then you use a check button and click two items of this then in that case i, I have my variables will be different and based on that my query also should change it should include not only category one it should include category two also that's little different changes in the query is also required but only the query I need to change, nothing else. Because then the product that all the loops and all will take care of itself and display me the both breakfast and lunch. So the rest, next is our gate bill. We have already discussed in the part one, same thing, no change is required and the confirmation. In the next part, what we'll do, we'll discuss about how this billing data, we push it to the uh, another table where we'll be storing the today's cell, yesterday's cell, uh, last one week cell, last month cell, last year cell. If, if, if you have data, everything can be pulled out from the data and we can create a report format on that. So these are all the things I thought I'll share with you and to continue with this series and other videos also, I'll request you one second to please subscribe to our channel and share this with your friends and all and please request them to subscribe to our channel also. We'll be producing much more interesting uh, videos or in applications and if you have any doubt, suggestion or somewhere you got stuck off or thing use the comment section below to post it as far as possible i'll will try to answer your uh, queries and changes whatever changes are required and you can play around this source code and change it based on your requirement thank you for watching and please subscribe